So there are some basic builds when it comes to Payday 2. Some are a little bit more complex than others. The main three used are heavy armor builds, dodge builds and of course stealth builds. This video will concentrate on the stealth build. I will take you through this build as a low infamy which means that the infamy skill tier reduction is not in play here and this build can be made from the very start of your payday career. For those who do not know, infamy is an option when you reach level 100 and have 200 million dollars in your offshore account. Once you go infamous, you go back to level 0, lose all your spending cash and have to work your way back to level 100 again. There are 25 of these to go through to max out your total level. While going infamous, you get infamy points to spend in the tree that gives you boosts, bonuses and masks. Four of these bonuses are skill tier reductions, allowing skills to be accessed with less points than before infamy. Perk decks are used in conjunction with skills to create builds, so as you complete heists, make sure you are leveling up your perks at the same time. There are only two perk decks that carry any benefit for stealth, and one in particular that carries the most. The two are both DLC perks, one being the Yakuza from the Yakuza character pack, and the other is Burglar from the Clover character pack. Yakuza's single benefit is the ability to move bags faster when you have low health, meaning that you have to injure yourself in order to get the benefits. For the Burglar perk deck, you are able to answer pages 10% faster and bag corpses 20% faster. If you own neither of these packs, then the no DLC perks of Crew Chief, Muscle, Armourer or Rogue all carry some benefit if things go loud and you have to run, but don't offer any direct stealth benefit. A further DLC option would be the Anarchist perk deck from the Sydney pack. With its high armour value and a skill called Transporter Ace, you can gain a decent speed advantage with bag moving. Today we'll be using either the Burglar or Yakuza perk decks. For the skills we'll be grabbing are the ones that increase our concealment, help with cameras, lock picking and drills, along with some essentials that will aid us in our movement. The way I will show the skill progression is actually the order I would get the skills, so you can use this as a guide as you climb the ranks and gain more skill points. First off, let's talk about concealment and detection. Your detection risk is a number that is determined by your concealment statistic, which is made up from the four concealment stats of your weaponry and armor. Your primary, secondary, melee and armor all have an effect here. If your concealment is too low, then your detection risk will rise and vice versa. Increasing your concealment will lower your detection. Please note that you cannot exceed the lowest detection of 3 and the highest of 75. Without going into the mechanics of view distances and detection based on varying factors, the simple mechanic is this. To give yourself the best chance of staying undetected, a 3 detection risk is the most beneficial. Stealthing with a higher number than this will make it a lot more difficult and really should only be used for challenges if that's your thing. The first skills to take are as follows. In the Ghost Tree, Duck and Cover Basic and Parkour Basic for speed and stamina boosts. Then we'll pick up Inner Pockets Basic which increases the concealment of our melee weapon by 2. Next we want to jump over to the Mastermind Tree real quick and grab Force Friendship Basic for 4 extra cable ties and the ability to tie sieves faster. Next we will hop back to the Ghost Tree where we'll work on the Shinobi section. Pick up Basic Chameleon and Sixth Sense. Sixth Sense is a great mechanic that allows you to mark all people in a 10 meter radius if you stand still for 3.5 seconds. Great to use for awareness before entering certain rooms. Next we will take Cleaner Basic to give us an extra body bag in our inventory. For the next point we want to pick up Hardware Expert Basic and then Technician Tree for silenced drills. We will come back here to max out the drill skills later. Back in the Ghost Tree we can now ace Sixth Sense and Chameleon which gives us the ability to pick up items in casing mode and unlock insider assets in the pre-planning menus of heists. Next we will work on getting our ECMs to do more for us. Ace out ECM Overdrive to be able to use ECMs to open electric doors and then ECM Specialist Ace to give us two ECM jammers, increased duration and ability to delay pager responses. Onto the Technician Tree next to upgrade our drill skills. Drill Sergeant Basic then Ace to reduce the time of drills by 30% Hardware Expert Ace and Kickstarter Basic to give drills and saws a 30% chance of restarting themselves. Now we want to pick up Resilience based in the Enforcer Tree on the way to transport to Basic so we can throw bags further. At this point we have a really good stealth build so next we will take skills to make it all encompassing. In Technician, take Third Law and Eco Sentry Basic to get to Jack of All Trades and Ace it. This will allow us to take two deployables into a heist. Note that whatever deployable we choose as the second one it is halved. For example, if we now choose ECMs as our secondary, we will only get one. It is the primary deployable that you get your full count of. Now we will ace cleaner in the ghost tree for the body bag deployable option and ace nimble for camera looping and lock picking speed. Next is second wind basic to optical illusions aced. This gives us a concealment boost for each silenced weapon we take with us into a heist. Jump to mastermind and pick up confident basic and then Stockholm syndrome basic. Stockholm syndrome means that civilians become intimidated by the noise we make meaning that we can now take a loud weapon with us and use it as crowd control. 
not needing to tie everybody up or keep yelling all the time. You must not forget to keep using your loud weapon to create noise or civilians will get up, run away and call the cops. Next in the fugitive tree we take martial arts and pumping iron basic in order to get to berserker basic. This skill is purely to help us with the saw in a stealth heist. Typically a saw on a deposit box takes two quick taps of the mouse but with berserker activated it will only take one increasing the efficiency. At this point we have 22 points left over and can ace out kickstarter in the drill section which can allow us to fix it by using our melee but only 50% chance each time. Finally we can ace out more firepower for more trip mines. These are great to place around a stealth heist and trigger a sound and mark a guard or civilian should they move through the laser. Be careful though having these in your inventory could easily be placed when lock picking a door. Or oh, safe house raid? How do you send a picture without a link? Best if you want to send me pictures. Oh no! A few moments later. Get the fuck up! Best shotgun in the game. Probably the judge or the raven. Time to No dude! I did it again! For the final 7 points you could use for a few different things. Normally I take lock and load basics so I run around with my gun ready to shoot but these could be reallocated. In the enforcer tree extra lead allowing 2 ammo bag deployables for saw purposes and also unlocking the secondary saw on the way. If you desire you could also use the last points to improve certain weapons be it pistols, shotguns or general stability and or accuracy. So those are all the skills that you could ever need for a stealth ice. It allows you to have everything from drills, ECMs, saws, trip mines and body bags, along with every skill that will increase your concealment. For weapons, melees and throwables, well that's up to you, but you have to be vigilant of that detection risk. As you add attachments to your guns, your concealment could lower. If you have concealment boost for weapons, then make sure they are on to help. I personally love taking a shotgun, mainly the judge or locomotive as a secondary, as you can launch guards out the way of cameras and other things if you need to. The same applies for the melee weapon, but for the throwable I typically take the molotovs. This is for two reasons. First, if I'm using the Yakuza perk deck, which I do for shadow raid with all the heavy bag moving, then I molotov myself at the beginning to lower my health and get the speed boost. Secondly, if I'm going to be using a saw, then I do the same thing as I want to activate the berserker skill for saw efficiency. I will link some stealth videos in the description of me using this build if you are interested, but I figured stealth gameplay looks the same regardless of the build, unlike loud builds which need more of a showcase. Anyway, let me know how your stealthing goes and what heist you are doing for the first time solo stealth.